Good afternoon, my lovelies. And welcome to the Queen's Curry Kitchen. You are in my kitchen. This is a Saturday morning. I am Nupur. If you haven't met me, my name is Nupur. Some people call me Chef Nupur. Some people call me the Queen of Curry. But I live in Queens and I make curry in my little tiny kitchen in Queens. Okay, today I am making a very classic Punjabi rustic food combination, which is makki ki roti and sarso ka saag. Makki ki roti is actually bread, flat bread that's made out of cornmeal. And um, people find it very challenging to knead it, to make a dough out of it. So I'm going to get in there with some tips and tricks and I'll show you how we do it. I don't make it very often, so I can't say that I'm an expert of any sort, but I will try. Okay, so let me share with you what is the brand of cornmeal that I've used. Hi Pearl, welcome to the Queen's Curry Kitchen. It's good to see you here, it's been a while. I hope you're doing well. I'm just going to heat up some more water because I have to keep doing it in punctuations and I need hot water at all times. So this is the cornmeal that I'm using. It's called Masarepa. And uh, it comes from corn, yellow cornmeal, which has some enrichments of iron and niacin and thiamine and whatever. But it's basically just yellow corn. And the proportion that I use is, this is two cups of cornmeal. Um, can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear the sound? If the sound is good, can you give me a thumbs up? All right, so I've used two cups of cornmeal. Yeah, so sound is good. All right, thank you for that uh, validation. I appreciate that. So basically what happens is whenever you're trying to knead something that is a gluten-free flour, this is a technique that you can use across the board in any of the gluten-free flours. And I didn't know that till I actually went gluten-free. So here's what you do. Let's say you have two cups of flour, okay? You're going to take one cup of water and you're going to boil the water. You may decide to salt it or season it, it's up to you. In this case, I have added a little salt, a little garlic powder, and a little bit of lemon juice, okay? Because I don't like my uh, makiki roti to be bland. I've also added some carom seeds. I don't know if you can see it. These are the little brown flecks that you see. Those are carom seeds, which is also called ajwain. Hi, Aruna, welcome to the Queen's Curry Kitchen. We are making makiki roti and sarso kasal. That is on the menu. Okay, I have some um, hot water handy. So the first thing I did was I let the water boil. The proportion of water to the cornmeal is going to be one is to two. So for one cup of water, you're going to put two cups of this cornmeal. If you go to the Indian grocery store, you can get the makki kata, which they sell. I prefer this one. It's really good. It has a good texture. I've used it before. I don't make this very often. <laughs> hey, Bindu, it's good to see you, honey. I don't make this very often, but since I was making it today, I thought, let me bring you guys in and show you how it's done, all right? So with any gluten-free flour, when you're trying to make it, <laughs> come on over if you want some. <laughs> um, with any gluten-free flour, you just put it, um, put the water to boil and when it, start, when it starts to bubble, you add, your, uh, you add the flour and then stir it very gently with a wooden spoon and then cover it and set it aside. It's not going to look like a paste or dough of any kind, but you just have to have the flour, the grain uh, from the flour incorporate with the moisture and soak it up. Then you cover it and put it aside for about 10 minutes or so. Then you handle it and you know transfer it to a bigger uh, flat vessel or a mixing bowl. Happy New Year to you, my love. Hello, Faye. Hi, Karishma. It's good to see you guys here. Um, transfer it into a big bowl or a mixing bowl. And then sprinkle hot water very sparingly. This is like super piping hot water. I had actually gone to shower after I covered my dough. So I'm having to use this extra hot water step. If you stay attentive and um, the dough is a little bit warm to the touch, you don't need to use the extra hot water, okay? So basically, you have to literally just go in there and use the back of your palm, the heel of your palm. I'm using Sarso Kasag. I'll show you all the details on that, okay? And you are going to press this down. So you're basically, there is no gluten, so it's kind of hard for the dough to stick to itself, right? But the more you do, 
this action of pressing it together with the heel of your hand, it will actually become nice and smooth. Okay, so you can see the way you'll know it is that if you press it together, it will hold the shape. Okay, so if you hold the dough like this and you have indentation that doesn't bounce back, you're okay. That means your roti is less likely to break, okay? I am going to use, and this should be a tight dough. This is a very tight dough. You can see like I have to literally pound it so hard and then I can see a dent in it. It should not be a soft dough. I'm gonna use a little bit of water. Okay, and I will use a little oil. Now, like I said, I don't make it too often. So we'll see. Okay, what I'll do is I let the dough rest for a little bit. And in the meantime, I'll bring you in and show you all the details about the mustard greens per se. I'm going to cover this. Let me quickly show you what I use for the mustard greens. Now, if you are doing this with fresh mustard leaves. Hi, Subhashini. Welcome to Queen's Curry Kitchen. Hi, Nalini. This is the brand that I use. It's called Mitchell's and it's available in all Indian grocery stores. And it actually says Saag. You can see it reads Saag. It doesn't say mustard greens. But if you look on the back, it actually is a combination of mustard leaves, spinach leaves, um, green chilies and garlic. Um, and a little bit of the cornmeal. Okay, so that's traditionally how sag is made. If you're trying to make it from scratch, then get all your greens, wash them, boil them. And um, when you boil them, add the garlic, add the green chilies and make it exactly with these components. And then you have to mash it with a wooden masher, not in a mixer grinder, okay? So that's that. For the tempering, we are going to use garlic, a shit ton of garlic. I don't use uh, fresh ingredients for the sarsoka sagis because I don't get that India taste in the mustard greens over here. Okay, so mustard greens here are also sold as broccoli rabe. It just does not compare. Um, I do have a trick. If you want to make it with fresh ingredients, then when you're boiling it, add a little bit of broccoli and add a piece of turnip to your mustard greens and your spinach. And also we don't get batweka sag over here. So it's very hard to replicate that taste. And then you just feel like you're slurping on grass soup which i don't think is a desirable taste so there are some things that i just really like to use frozen especially things like methi things like sarso which are really have a very characteristic and a typical taste when it comes from india and also in india it's automatically organic by default so that's also quite reassuring one of the main ingredients that goes in sarso kasag is of course ghee if you have ghee haters in your home don't tell them you used ghee uh, use a little bit of ghee and use more butter or whatever, but you can't spill all the beans with them, okay? I am going to use um, some some ginger as well, okay? And I have butter. So I've got my butter. I'm using uh, this clay pot to make it, but you can actually make it in any saucepan. Well, for all the processed ingredients in the can, Bindu, you have to be careful. You must read what is the sodium content in this. Uh, like in this, this has 105 mgs of sodium, which is 4% of your total intake. But if this is going to make six portions, then 4% of your total intake in six portions. And then, you know, you have to pretty much, if you're doing beans or garbanzos, then make sure you rinse them out really well. Also, when you buy organic beans, they have less sodium, but rinse it out anyway. This is something that you can't rinse. So I'm kind of stuck with it. Um, when you buy the frozen methi or you buy the frozen like other vegetables that come from India, maybe like you want to get chiku to make your chiku shake. Those have uh, not that many. Yes, of course, I'll send you a picture, Karishma. You want to take a screenshot? Let me hold it for you, but it's kind of backwards. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And you'll find it in the Indian grocery store, wherever they have the section where they have all the beans and the peas. This is what it looks like. Okay, so if you haven't taken a screenshot, let me know. I'll be happy to send you uh, the pictures. Okay, I am also going to use um, ginger. So let's just start with the first step, which is putting ghee into this, pan, into this pot. I will bring you closer. What I'll do is I'll actually start the sag over here and then I will, you know what, let me actually move this over there. Here you go. Is that better? Oh, okay, Karishma, no problem. I'll send it for you, honey. Don't, don't worry about it. Don't be distracted, okay? 
you can always watch the replay so you'll be able to see all the uh, directions that i'm giving this is pure ghee that i'm using if you're vegan then you can make this with olive oil coconut oil whatever it is but i kid you not the flavor that ghee brings to saag i think nothing compares okay so it's really simple some people try to do an overload with a lot of spices and a lot of uh, masalas and onions and tomatoes and what not i keep it very 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 simple okay so i put ginger i put garlic i may put maybe one thinly sliced onion if that i'm not sure yet we'll see uh, how that goes and then i'll show you how i do the tempering for the saag okay so i'm going to cut this ginger into juliennes and the process actually goes really really fast so once you have it going there's no way that you can stop it or reverse it right so this is the can of hey reena welcome to the queen's curry kitchen we are making makki ghee roti and sarso ka saag if you live in america you would get this saag in a can which actually not only makes your life infinitely easier but it's also super delicious because it tastes very close to the way saag in india is made and served okay so i am making these ginger juliennes that's what's going on right now i know i should have done a little bit of the prep to save you the time otherwise the video tends to get a little longer but hey if you've chosen to spend your saturday afternoon with me i'm happy about that okay i will also be using asafoetida because it's mucho importante uh, it is great for digestion and my grandmother always used it so i'm going to use it as well I will use a little bit of jeera not that it's traditionally used but I like a little texture in my saag I don't like it to taste like baby food so I'm going to start out with a little bit of jeera which is cumin seeds and this is the shit ton of garlic that I spoke about okay so this needs to go in people also use a lot of green peppers I don't use any jalapenos or Thai chilies or anything I don't eat heat in my food so I won't be putting it in Okay like I said if you have a ghee hater in your house <laughs> Who's going to teach me Spanish you're going to teach me Spanish Jishe Estrella hello hello welcome we are making corn cornmeal flatbread from masarepa and we are making mustard greens okay so this is going to saute hello kina welcome it's good to see you my love We are making mustard greens. I just went through the process of making the dough for the flatbreads which is right here and I will do a quick recap when we jump into that. Okay, so while this is browning, oh my god, the aroma is absolutely insane. Like the way the garlic and ghee react, I think it's you have to you have to either be Indian or Punjabi to know what a heavenly aroma it is, right? I'm going to add a little bit of kasuri methi. Oh my god, Bri is sick. I'm sorry to hear that, boo boo. Feel better soon. Oh, make her a big part of my um go on my YouTube channel and watch that tomato butternut squash soup. She's going to love that. Okay, so I added the fenugreek, which actually gives it a very nice deep kind of earthy flavor. It's absolutely delicious. I love it in all my greens especially in saag or even in my palak paneer I love to add kasuri methi it's the characteristic north indian flavor that you get I am going to add the onions but I will not overcook the onions okay that's kind of like not the point the thing with the clay up the clay pot is that once it's heated up you can't really control much. like you can turn down the heat but you can't really do much cuz it goes really really fast and it retains the heat so you can't really cut it out Okay so I'm going to just go desi style like right on top of the pot. Yeah I mean I don't do this often but <laughs> there are days when I will do this. <laughs> hey Kausal Saraj how are you? We are making makki ki roti and sarso ka saag. Welcome just share this video and let your friends come in and join me on this Saturday afternoon. It's a nice sunny afternoon. We just had some snow yesterday so it's the perfect day to make something like this. And also if you're gluten free this is a great alternative to eating regular rotis. When you buy store bought makki ki roti which is already prepared you will notice in the list of ingredients there is always a uh, whole wheat flour that is mixed into it. Okay and if you're gluten free or if you have celiac you don't want to eat you don't want to buy those rotis. Okay I'm going to get this pan ready. 
because we will be making those rotis. Just let me clear out some space from here. As you can tell, the space is tiny and my dreams are big, just like my mouth. <laughs> I want to literally make everything. Every time I come on the live, I feel like, oh, I just want to make everything and show you guys everything so that you guys can start making simple things at home. All right, so the trick to the onions is that we are not going to over... I, are you able to see um, whatever is going on inside the pan? Because there's a lot of glare coming. Just let me know. If you're not able to see it, I might move it further down this way, okay? All right, so the idea is not to overcook the onions, okay? You can see they're not brown. They're just translucent. They're breaking down a little bit. Now is the time that we will go in and add our mustard greens. So right out of the can, this is what they look like. They're completely smooth. Okay, so you just go right in, go to town with this. And this is a very fine mince. So whoever is running this company and making this canned sog really knows their shit. Like they're not, they're not playing. They know their shit. This is literally as good as it gets. Like if you were living in a, if you grew up in like rustic Punjab or something and you had a baby who was spending all day making saag, this is literally how it would look. And as soon as I put it in the pan, I can smell um, the green chilies. So I know this is a real deal. And I've used this brand many, many times. Okay, I'm going to crank up the heat once again. This is the time I'm going to check for seasoning to make sure that it's um, salty enough and whatnot. I have not added any spices yet. Yeah, it definitely needs salt. It's very mildly salted. So I will add some salt right there. I'll add some paprika, just a little bit and just a hint of coriander seed powder. If you're wondering where to get all these spices, the spice box and the spice refills are available on my website, queenscurrykitchen.com. You can head on over there and you can order to your heart's content. There are also spice blends. There is chai masala. There are books on every conceivable possible Indian topic that I could teach you. It's all there. Okay, so don't forget to check out queenscurrykitchen.com. And also, if you're there, download the free chana masala recipe and then make it. It's from my book, The Vegan Indian Home. It's the simplest chana masala recipe. It's really going to help you to get over your intimidation with trying your hands at Indian food. I am gonna go ahead and add the asafoetida. Some people like to crackle the asafoetida in hot oil. I like to add it into my simmering or boiling stuff just because I feel like it permeates better and it lasts longer. Okay, so that's that. We don't want to over crowd this with any more masala. I have a little bit of the hot water that I'm holding on to. Now it is standard practice to add a little bit of the cornmeal back into the sag, okay? So if you haven't done this, you should. Add the cornmeal back into the sag. This helps with thickening and it also kind of marries the two flavors together. So that's the reason they put it back then in the old days, I think they never had corn flour or whatever. So this is what my grandmother used to use. I'm just gonna do a quick wash of hands. Okie doke. This is all ready to be moved over. Making some room for my other stuff that needs to go on here. Okay. Always have a clean work surface. I tend to make a huge mess when I cook but then I like a clean work surface as well. So I'm kind of all over the place. Okay, so this is gonna happen. You are, you are better off using a wooden spoon or a spatula like this. I'm using a clay pot, but you could use any kind of pan that has a thick bottom so that it's not gonna stick to the bottom of the pan. Okay, we are going to keep stirring this. I will go ahead and add just a little bit of hot water so that I will have the room for this sag to bubble and simmer and also the moisture from this water is going to go and attach itself to the cornmeal that I put in so it's going to be a nice smooth and creamy taste okay just before serving what I am going to do is I will create another tempering of butter garlic and paprika 
and just sizzle it right on top of the sog before serving and that's going to be it okay so we don't need to play with this too much i'm just going to give it a some people like to add tomatoes i just feel like sarsoka sog itself has a little bit of a tang to it okay so you don't want to overpower it it shouldn't have a sour taste like it should have a very balanced taste which is why i don't add any tomatoes to my sog I may add a little bit of garam masala later on, but it all depends on how it comes out and it could differ from batch to batch depending on what is the quality of your greens. Now, one quick tip, whenever you're making your greens, okay, I'm gonna set this right over here. Whenever you're cooking your greens, just be very careful with the salt. So there are certain things that kind of already have a very salty quality. Eggs, is one of them and greens any kind of greens are one of those things that has a very very salty quality so whenever you make anything with uh, your spinach or you're using kale just use your salt very very sparingly okay coming right back to the dough this is what it looks like right now for those of us who are just joining us i'm going to do a quick recap of how we made the dough okay so what you're going to um now i mean blend kori ni ami you can your sag ta use kori jurubi this is what i used i didn't make it from scratch i always use this brand it's already been blended so i don't uh, make it from scratch because it's just very time consuming okay for the people that are wanting to know about the cornmeal dough i'm just going to do a quick recap if you live in america you can buy this brand if you have access to an indian grocery store you can buy um the makki ka aata from there okay so you can do that then what i did is i boiled 1 cup of water with salt and caram seeds and when the water started to come to a rolling boil i actually used 2 cups of this corn meal into that i stirred it around and i put a lid on it turned off the flame and set it aside for 10 to 15 minutes then i transferred it to a big mixing bowl and it was not looking anything like this it was all scattered and crumbly and then i added a little bit of hot water at a time and then i pressed it down with the heel of my palm to come together like this there's no oil there's no ghee in this the way you will know your dough is done is if you press it it will hold the indentation okay so this thing has a huge capacity to actually hold on to moisture So let's actually start making the rotis. My pan is super duper hot. The pan needs to be really really hot. Let me show you quickly what is happening to the sag in the meantime. You see it's already bubbling around the sides. We are just going to leave it as it is. We'll stir it from time to time and then leave it so that all the flavors will marry into each other. Some people also like to use uh uh dried uh, god what are those chilies called? chile arbol which is the red mirchi into their tadka i have not used that i don't have any mirchi in my house unfortunately okay so now we're going down to making the uh, i don't know if you guys can see okay so this is what it looks like okay i'm going to set this over here let's get this thing going I haven't made these in a while you guys so I'm happy that you're sharing your time with me we can totally do this together this is my rolling pin this is my board you can also straight away do it on the countertop no problem okay so just gather it up Just make sure it's nice and even. It's a very tight dough. It's not a loose dough like roti dough. It's pretty pretty tight. If you need to use some water to wet your hands and get it moving, you you can. Okay. Some people like to use a piece of plastic over this. Some people like to use parchment. Let me do the. Let me do it with parchment so that. Let's do this. So there are a couple of ways that you can do this. And me being the queen of shortcuts. I'm going to go this way. Ugh. 
right some people also have the press which they use which is like the roti press or the masa press if you see how they make the um how they make the arepas you know they have that press and crack they just do it like so quickly it's amazing how they do it so just press it out roll it out I don't, I'm afraid to make it too thin because I don't make it so frequently. And I'm like, ah, it's going to break. What am I going to do? So maybe I'm just being a chicken about it. I don't know. Have you guys tried to make this at home? Well, okay. Here's another tri trick that people do. Some people also like to put grated radish, which is muli, into their maki gata. Uh, shouldn't this have been at the bottom too? Blah. Okay. What else? We are fine. All right. Now we're going to go in with a very gingerly. I'm going to try to lift it off. I should have put the plastic at the bottom as well. So then we would not have this problem. But hey, you know, live and learn. I don't make this every day. Okay. I'm just being very real and very vulnerable with you guys. I really do not make this every day. So this is what it looks like. If you're anal and you want to have, um, what do you call it? Perfect circles, then you know what? You could always trim it, but no one's judging. And I think uh, the uneven edges actually have a very rustic quality, which I love about it. But, you know, some people are perfectionists. <laughs> okay. So everybody's alive. No one's going to die. It's all good. This is how thick mine are. You can make them thinner if you want some people actually go on top of the stove and then spread it out a little bit but it tends to crack so you have to just either wet your hands and do it very gently don't worry my hands are pretty immune to heat so even though the stove is on do not try this at home if you have sensitive skin or if you're not an expert in the kitchen like don't try to pat something directly on top of the stove if it's not something that you're used to okay but I can do it. I'm pretty much okay with that. I can even, even like fry stuff really close to the hot oil surface. That's just the nature of the beast that I have become. I wasn't always like this though. Because I remember when my mom used to work in the kitchen, I was like, oh my God, how are you going to flip this? How are you going to flip this? So I would bring like spatulas and everything to flip rotis. But now only on the days when I get manicures and the skin is really um, exposed and trimmed down, then I actually feel more heat on my hands make sure your hands are super clean like if you have those fake nails like don't be trying to do this anybody gonna eat your makiki roti with nail grime <laughs> you must be wondering i am so graphic sometimes all right so we are going to let this cook on a medium flame if you want you can uh, put a little water on the top and just cover it briefly to give it a little more you know steam kind of an effect that's that let's see how the saga is doing um okay i kind of missed out on watching the comments for the part that i was actually rolling out the roti so if anybody has any questions any comments if you've ever tried to make any gluten-free flatbreads in your home um what has been successful for you what has worked for me this whole thing of boiling the flour in hot water has been a game changer as far as all gluten-free flours are concerned. I've been able to make jawar ki roti, I've been able to make bajra ki roti, and I've been able to make tacos with all of those rotis. So another thing that you can also actually do with anything that's gluten-free is instead of making a dough, you actually make a liquid batter and then make your breads from the batter instead of making it from the dough. Okay, so the sag is actually still bubbling away. Okay, this is what it's looking like. There is moisture in there. Let me see if I can bring you in a little closer. There you go. Can you guys see? It's a little dark, but yeah. So you can see it's bubbling away. It's doing good. I'm going to turn the heat to medium. This will need about 20 minutes. And if you're really in a rush, you can actually crank up the heat and get it done in 15, 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. Also, you don't have to make the makiki roti with your sarsoka sag. You can just do regular chapatis. It tastes really good. And sarsoka sag also tastes excellent the next day. Okay? 
So this is what it looks like. It's moving around freely, which means that I can actually flip it now. Okay, there are no brown spots yet. So I'm going to let this cook a little more. This the flame is on medium, medium high. I'm also going to now start preparing for making the final tempering that has to go on top of the sog before it needs to be served. For that, I'm going to go ahead and melt some butter since I have the ghee hater in my house who hates ghee. He cannot be told that there is ghee in something. It's not going to go down well for whatever reason. Okay. Okay. You think I'm funny? <laughs> hey, Lois. How are you? It's good to see you. It's uh, nice to see you. <laughs> so Lois is really a sweetheart. He lives with his two cats. And he's the most amazing and generous guy that I've ever met. Happy New Year to you, Lewis. Okay, so the butter is melted. Tell me if in the New Year you're trying to like eat more homemade food. You're trying to stay indoors. You're trying to just, you know, gather yourself together. Is that something that you're trying to do in the New Year? I don't know. I just love spending time at home. And um, there was a time in my life when I used to always like to go out. But then now when I look back at it, I realize that the more welcoming your home is or the more peaceful your home is, I think the less you run out to find peace. Um, and also the, the more traumatic your home is, you're always like trying to run away from it. I didn't realize it back then, but I did it without realizing um, I don't know what I was looking for, but I also loved to travel back then. Now I'm like, I love to travel, but it's not a desperate. And also with COVID, you can't go anywhere even if you want to. All right, so I'll bring you into how the roti is doing. Okay. So it's there's a nice roasted aroma that's filling my kitchen right now because of this roti. And you can see it's perfectly round. You see there are some brown spots. Now, if you're going to serve this at a later time, you can just cook them up to here and wrap them in a tea towel and let them be till you're ready to eat. If you're going to serve it immediately, the last step that you're going to do is you will take this and you will char it directly on your flame. Okay, and you should be careful. Keep an eye on it at all times. You see how it fluffs up like a, like a ball? Literally, I have never had that happen to my corn rotis. It only started happening once I used the technique of using hot water and having my rotis, uh, having the flour bubble up with that. You see how it's bubbling up? Oh my God, tell me if this is not heaven. Child, what is heaven? This is great. And that charred flavor along with, just make sure you flip it on all sides. The flame is medium high and you don't want any raw bits of corn, maize, whatever you want to call it. That's that. And then the way you'd serve it is with a shitload of butter. Is that true that butter goes through your buttocks? I don't know. <laughs> Man, I love butter. <laughs> no, somebody said... For a minute on your lips, forever on your hips. Is that true about butter? Like, I don't know. I love... If there was one food that could be calorie exempt and I could ask God to make it calorie exempt, I think I would ask for ghee or butter. So that would be my thing. I don't know. That's, that's how I feel about ghee and butter. I just love ghee and I love butter, but I'm just so scared of eating it. So I don't put butter on everything. All right. So this roti is done. Hello, Angela. Good to see you, my love. All right, so this corn makiki roti is done. We are going to put this here. And now I'm going to get ready to create the final tempering that I have to put on top of my sag when I'm going to serve it, okay? So, let's take a good look at what it looks like right now. Are you with me? Where's everybody gone? Okay. So it's bubbling away. It looks really good. We're going to give it a gentle stir. It smells good. Looks good. Keep stirring it. I'm going to remove the lid halfway so that it 
some of the moisture can evaporate. It should not be a wet sog, nor it should be a dry sog. It should be somewhere in the middle. So this is the butter that's going to go into this little tempering pan. Whenever you want to create a tempering with butter, make sure that you don't put all butter all the way. Use a little bit of oil to bring down the burning temperature. Otherwise, butter tends to burn very quickly. I do have to... Uh, da -da 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 -da, where's my other onion? Oh, snap. What did I do with it? Oh, there it is. So I'm going to put little bits of onion for my final tempering. And I'm going to put... Let's just do it right here in front of you guys. Okay. Do it the rustic way with no chopping board. So this is how they do it in the villages of India. You have a small tiny knife with like a razor sharp blade. You hold it like this. You go like this. You're going to laugh at me, but this is how they do it in all the street foods. All the aunties that chop their vegetables at home, this is exactly how they do it. Then they flip it. Then they go in between there. Not all the way. And then they just go like that. Chuck, 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 chuck. See that? It's called desi. It's called the desi jugar. <laughs> for real, for real. Okay, so I'm just going to take a few more bits from the sides. And the rest I'm going to serve on the side as raw onions. Because what is a Punjabi meal without raw onions, right? If you're Punjabi, if you know, you know. If you're not from North India, if you're not from Punjab, you will never understand the importance of eating raw onions along with your food. But I'm telling you, at a time where infection rates are very, very high, eating raw onions with every meal is really, really something that can save your gut from infections. And I've, I've heard from the elders that it really protects you inside and out from all the infections. So eat raw onions in your diet. Okay, now the final tadka, the final tempering that's going to go on here is going to be a little bit of my ginger. Now remember, we already put the ginger juliennes in the sag before. So we will put a little bit of these right there. Juliennes are nice. If you want to grate them, you can grate them. But mostly it's a lot of garlic that you will taste in your sag. Garlic and... Of course, the characteristic flavor of the mustard as well. Okay, so this is it. Let me see if I can find some red mirchi. I know I have them somewhere, but it's been so long that I don't use any of these things that it's impossible for me to find them. I need them. Okay, well, I don't think we're going to have any luck with that today. But you know what I'll do? I'll add some crushed red peppers to this. I can do that. Is this the way you make it at home as well? Let me know how you make it at home. So this is crushed red peppers, which is actually nothing but broken down pieces of. Okay, so these are my onions. Again, we are not going to overdo them. We just want that little crunch. And that's just me because I don't like my food to taste like baby food and I don't like pureed food. So I always add something to kind of bring a contrast in terms of texture. Okay. Just slowly we are going to bring this to. I'm not trying to caramelize them. I'm just going to try to keep them neutral. Just sweat them out a little bit, soften them up a little bit. That should be it. I'm going to show you what the final serving is going to look like, even though I will continue to cook my sag for at least another maybe 15 or so minutes. So this is going. Keep an eye on it, you guys. So this is what we're going to use to plate our sarsonka sag. Our roti is done already. I'm going to set it on this paper towel. And we will do the whole nine yards. Okay. So this is what it looks like. I will now go ahead and add something that we need to do for color. A little bit of salt. 
Oh, it smells really good. Really, really, really good. Okay, this is the final tempering that's going to go in. A little bit of chaat masala. Just for that umami taste. Some more of the dry fenugreek herb. All the spices that you're seeing here are available on my website. So you could go to queenscurrykitchen.com. You can order the masala box. You can add, order just the spices. If you're looking to get a refill for the box that you already bought before. I will be adding a little bit of paprika for color. And a little bit of coriander seed powder again. And just a pinch of garam masala. Now before my paprika burns, I'm going to turn off the stove. And just add a tad bit of water to the paprika to extract all the red color. This is called building the rogan. So anything that you're tempering, add the paprika all the way in the end. And then turn off your stove immediately, add water. This is how you build the rogan in a dish. And it's supposed to be the most appetizing looking thing. So if you're trying to do any kind of North Indian food, whether it's a dal, whether it's a, any curry and you want to add that final pizzazz, this is what you would add. It's called building the rogan. This is what rogan is. Okay. So the fog, come on in. Take a look. It is um, bubbling away. You can see all the ginger juliennes and... And you can literally see that the ghee is almost disappeared. You don't see it. But it's a very moist sag. It's not dry. It smells freaking incredible. Okay. So I'm going to top this here. And then I'll show you how we would ah, serve it without burning our hand. Right. <laughs> That'd be nice. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. Drop some comments. Let me know if... Mustard greens are your favorite greens. Do you like spinach more or do you like mustard greens more? You've got to have a favorite. Come on. Do you like kale? Like, are you a kale person? Okay, so we're just going to create a little bit of a dent right there. Okay, come on here. Back to where we were. And then you're going to take some of this rogan, which is just buttery goodness. And you're going to add that right there. Okay, so this is what keeps the moisture into the sog so even if you're serving it the next day or whatever this is what it looks like i am going to plate it in a very rustic way and show you exactly how it is served okay so this is pretty much how you would serve it this is the kind of plates that you have this is your makiki roti just want to make sure there's like no <laughs> they're like literally like almond stuff or whatever okay that's that i will add more ghee to the roti because this roti is supposed to be very very dry if you don't add ghee to it so as soon as you take it off the stove add your butter or ghee white butter or white whipped butter is best but if you don't have that that's totally fine also serve uh, this is usually served with a piece of jaggery on the side only because only because jaggery is really great for digestion and of course we have to do the onions what is a Punjabi meal without onions you can also um, put the onions on the top of the sag I hope you're able to see everything there's a lot of glare at this time in my kitchen I do apologize for that okay and um yeah, I hope you can. <laughs> Kina says it looks like a thank you, Kina. You're just so kind. You're the kindest person I've ever seen. Hey, Shri Devi. Welcome. Vidya, welcome, welcome. So just a little bit of red mirchi. This is how they do it in the villages of Punjab. This is literally cayenne pepper, a little salt. And sometimes they put lemon juice and sometimes they don't. It really depends. If you have it, you should put it. If you don't have it, I mean, you know, there's already so much flavor going on, so you're not going to miss it. And I'm going to show you one more thing that I'm going to add to this, which is kind of very interesting. And that's going to be, okay, so that's the lemon juice that goes on here. Okay, are you guys with me? You want some lemon? Yay! Hey, Shalini, how are you today? Okay, so that's the lemon juice. And then alongside this, 
what is typically served is some homemade pickle, right? So I've already spoken about the importance of homemade pickles and how the prebiotics and probiotics keep it going. So it's a very nice, sunny and fulfilling meal for anybody, especially if you've just come from working in the fields for hours and hours of physical labor. There you go. I may be teaching a class on classic Punjabi food um, because the Indian, North Indian festival of Lodi is coming. And if you want to learn any of this stuff, I'm happy to teach you. There are more classes come, coming up. So, you know, be careful. Keep an eye out for the website. You'll be able to see a lot of new stuff that is coming your way. I'm going to get out of this glare so you can see. All right. Oh, Shalini, catch the replay, sweetheart. All the replays are going to be here on Facebook. And also there is a YouTube channel by the name of Queen's Curry Kitchen. So head over to the YouTube channel. Whatever you've missed here today it gets uploaded on our YouTube. So you have not missed much. Uh, you can find us anywhere. You can also take a class to learn how to make any of these beautiful things. I've already taught a class um, on how to make the pickle. This is a muliki, mulika achar, which is a radish pickle. I just finished making the sarsoka sag. Uh, this is just good old onions. And I did an entire tutorial just now on the live making makiki roti. So I hope you enjoyed today's session and I hope that you will give this a try. It might be one of those time consuming meals, but you know, sometimes when you have the time and if food, cooking good food is therapy to you, I've shown you some trips and tricks, tips and tricks, uh, which is why we ended up using the canned sarsoka sag instead of using fresh mustard greens because it can be a process. So I've tried to simplify it as much as I can, but if you miss the taste of home, especially in the winter months when it gets really, really cold, and you want to dig into something that's super cozy and comforting to your soul. It's like giving your belly a hug and you crave something like this. Definitely make it for yourself and your family. Um, I swear, like you'll remember it. It's not something that you make every day because I do understand that we are pressed for time. But that's what this channel is about. That's what my page is about. It's about simplifying Indian food and making sure that you have... Uh, enough time in the day not only to make food that you can enjoy but also to sit down and relish it i i'm telling you this is the best act of self-care and self-love that you can do is to make something that you absolutely love and enjoy eating all right so with that i am going to take your leave if you haven't checked out my website it's queenscurrykitchen.com everything that you see here is on the website <laughs> oh kina you're so sweet kina says my food is amazing and it's the best food she had in new york Mwah, thank you so so much for your kind words and your compliments you're always just so kind and so generous with praise i really appreciate you we are now a family of over 5000 people on uh, on our facebook page and for everybody that decides to come down here and spend time with me I don't know if you actually make this stuff or don't make this stuff, but it helps me to eat better. It helps me to stay motivated when I see your comments, when I see you interacting, when I see you sharing pictures on your Instagram feed or Facebook feed based on something that I made. When you buy a book, when you share my live videos, every little thing counts. And for that, I am extremely, extremely grateful to each and every one of you. Thank you so much for spending your Saturday afternoon with me. I hope you will give this a try. If not, come on over to my house. If you're homesick, let me know when you're coming. I will make it for you okay with that i will take leave thank you so much for joining me today namaste be blissful be flavorful be safe out there take good care of yourselves and remember you're never too far from a good home-cooked meal take good care bye now